Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. Today I would like to delve into more detail into a particular type of golem that features a lot in D&D lore, particularly for Forgotten Realms, and that is the Shield Guardian. Constructed by mages expressly for the purpose of protecting mages, the first Shield Guardians were most likely designed and built in the ancient empires of Amasca and Netheril, but it is known that the elves of Everiska created many of them to guard their houses after their war with the Faerim and many were set to patrol the lake surrounding Herald Hall. There are certainly many manuscripts on their construction, but the resources and skill required to actually do it means that these constructs are rare. One modern source of new shield guardians is the Gnomish Island Nation of Lantern, and I have some juicy plot ideas for you towards the end of this video on how this can play into your campaign. A shield guardian is constructed from at least 5,000 gold worth of bronze, stone, steel and wood, and only a master of blacksmithing, masonry and carpentry can even build one to the level of precision required. The magical amulet through which the construct is controlled is made of precious and rare materials, is equally difficult to craft and costs 20,000 gold pieces. The shield guardian will only animate when it is linked to the amulet, which if it leaves the plane of existence it is constructed on will cause it to shut down completely. Pretty much like it loses its Wi-Fi connection. Since it only really moves about when connected via the amulet, I have a theory that perhaps it telepathically mimics some of the motor functions of the master's brain, in order to attain the agility and speed the shield guardian golems are well known for. The process of creation requires a special laboratory, specific knowledge of the art of crafting constructs, detailed notes on the actual manuscript on how it's done, and an extended ritual that involves the casting of spells such as discern location, shield, shield other, and limited wish. When the shield guardian activates, it forms a magical bond with the wearer of its control amulet, which will normally stay within a uh, hundred feet of the amulet wearer at all times, that's its default setting, unless ordered not to do so, or prevented from doing so. Whoever wears the amulet can control the shield guardian, and if the last wearer dies, the guardian will obey its final orders to the best of its ability. Whatever, uh, whatever act of command it had loaded into the amulet, as it were, will repeat to the shield guardian over and over. A destroyed amulet will render the guardian inert until the next amulet is constructed and keyed to the specific guardian again. The cost for the replacement may be lower than the original, but it may be the same price. 20,000 gold pieces. Shield guardians can be made in various sizes and strengths, but the simplest and cheapest to make stand about 9 feet, nearly 3 meters tall, and weigh over 1,200 pounds, or 540 kilograms. They look something like a large stick figure made of wood, with rocky appendages and metal parts, including heavily armoured head and torso, lower limbs and grasping digits. The shield guardians are not mindless, they may need only basic verbal, verbal commands from their master to function independently. They will do their best to obey their orders, they though are not very adept problem solvers, can be programmed to do specific tasks very well, and can be instructed to perform those tasks in a regular pattern at specific times, like meet uh, so-and-so here every Thursday at 6 o'clock. The shield guardian cannot speak but it can magically understand the commands of anyone controlling it through the amulet, no matter the speaker's language. Moreover, the wearer of the amulet can summon the shield guardian magically from anywhere within the same plane. Though the guardian might have some difficulty making the journey, it will always know the location of its amulet. This does not mean that its master can call it to break. Uh, this does mean that the master can call it to break them out of prison, because the guardian is capable of slamming down doors, breaking through walls bending cell room bars and moves like a 1200 pound tank right through any opposition. A shield guardian protects its master with great speed and agility, attempting to deflect any blows and attacks. If commanded to do it, a shield guardian can generate a magical shield that will partially defend its master from harm, providing the, sh the master remains within the 100 feet or 30 meters range of the Guardian. Within 60 feet, the Guardian can absorb half the damage of any kind inflicted on its master. However, the Shield Guardian does regenerate, restoring 10 hit points at the start of its turn, as long as it's not been reduced to zero. The common configuration depicted in Out of the Abyss has an armor class of 17, 142 hit points, 30 foot speed, 18 strength and constitution, blindsight, uh, blindsight to 10 feet, 
and dark vision out to 60 feet, a total immunity to poison, being paralyzed, frightened, charmed, exhausted, and it feels no pain. It is, um, if it's within five feet of its master, so adjacent to them, it also grants them an additional plus two to their armor class, thanks to it quick action to deflect anything, essentially like they're carrying a shield. A shield guardian also acts similar to a ring of spell storing, being able to store a single spell that can be cast upon it and recast the same spell at a later time, provided it is commanded to do so. To do it, the wearer must have the spell um, cast on the guardian. The spell has no effect, but is stored within the guardian. When commanded to do so by the wearer, or when the situation arises that was predefined by the spellcaster, the guardian casts the stored spell with any parameters set by the original caster, requiring no components. This, of course, is a huge benefit to the spellcaster, and owning a shield guardian is a highly coveted status symbol, as well as a very intimidating warning to others that the spellcaster is not a person to be messed with. But it's also of great value to non-spellcasters. I mean, they can use the spell storing ability of the shield guardian as well. For instance, paying a mage to cast a mention door on this construct, it stores the spell and its, cast, its master can use it to make a quick uh, getaway in the future. The guardian is a slow but steady mount or servant capable of carting around a load that would quickly uh, tire out any humanoid of flesh and blood. An explorer could seek the back of, um, could ride the back of the shield guardian for hundreds of miles, potentially just for lols. The shield guardian um, picks up a dying master and is instructed to take me away from here quickly. And then the master dies of their wounds, and that shield guardian will be seen several months la later charging across the wilderness, carrying out the very decomposed corpse. It's funny, and it's gross. It's a win-win. Okay, so here's a possible scenario. Aside from the tropes of the long dormant shield guardian activated and bursting from undergrown, uh, uh, overgrowth of moss and vines to battle adventurers who have interloped and trespassed on the area the contract, contract was set to guard, or the evil mage high-ranking Zentarum agent with a shield guardian bodyguard loaded with very um, annoying heal spell, because players just love it when the bad boss person just springs back up from near death. Um, this set of events is great for a random side quest on the island of Chult or a city port along the Sword Coast, pretty much any port town really. The premise is that a new criminal mastermind and merchant and quirky nasty person arrives in town. They're set to work getting on the bad side of everybody, but they're not technically doing anything illegal yet. The player characters are hindered by this non-player character a few times. Nothing worth killing the NPC over, but they're protected by the law until they demonstrate uh, demonstrably break it after all. But the villain is clearly setting up some sort of protection racket on the local merchants, and the trade across town is suffering. Prices are going up, there are new thugs being hired as security for merchants, and they are appearing outside doorways to shops, making every basic commerce fairly annoying. As sometimes the security guards are a little better than the other thugs and con artists they are supposed to be guarding against. Well, the bad person has set up an office of sorts, moving themselves and their cohort of hired thugs into a local inn, and all but taking over from the poor innkeeper, innkeeper and his family, who might seek out the adventurer's aid, since the bad guy is technically a well-paying guest and the innkeeper, innkeeper is simply too scared to ask them to leave, and the guards can't do anything about it. But if the players can prove the villain is um, strong-arming and threatening people around town, and get someone to lay a complaint about it, or better yet, link the villain to a serious mugging or murder, the guards can leap into action and arrest lots of people, including the mastermind. Now, there is a hidden agenda going on, the villain has a ship due to arrive into port from the island of Lantern, and on it are two shield guardians who are controlled by two ornate braces the villain wears, concealed under the elbow-length velvet gloves they usually wear. If the ship arrives on time, the villain now has two very powerful personal bodyguards and could potentially take over the whole town, along with their squad of thugs. They could take control of the local thieves' guild with relative ease and add more troops to their mob. They could extend their threats to city officials, putting a lot of pressure on the local law enforcers and gilded merchants. Masterminds can also pull some really dirty tricks like smearing the reputation of rivals with fake news scandals published by broadsheet newsprinters who are willing to take a bribe, or writers of salacious gossip notes. In some parts, this sort of rumour and gossip is called uh, the clack. And these notes and booklets are very popular fireside reading in taverns and other meeting places in most cities. 
They're usually condemned by the nobility as the nobility are so often the target of the current gossip, and the authors of such things are so hard to track down. Because most common folk tend to believe that there must be a grain of truth to any rumour, whether there is any actual evidence or not, and the damage can be done quite easily. So a rival merchant can really cause a lot of trouble by spreading vicious, entirely untrue lies, and while this disruption is going on, their real goal progresses so much more easily, as everyone is too distracted by the fake news scandals to notice the gradual shift in power taking place. It may be getting a little bit real, too real for some people. Once the Shield Guardians arrive, the game is over, and nothing sort of an all, short of an all-out battle would put a stop to the villain and their evil schemes. If the villain does get arrested and thrown into a jail cell, they may elect to activate the Shield Guardians early, which will cause them to burst from their storage crates, leap from the sides of the cargo ship carrying them, and marching across the seabed to, at some time later, burst from the sea and march across town, slamming holes in walls and kicking down doors, rending iron bars, and taking the villain to safety. If the villain is taken to the Hanming's noose or chopping block before the golems arrive, they simply give a final instruction to their constructs through their amulets, destroy this town and all who dwell in it, before they go to whatever fates the god deem fit for their soul. Fighting two rampaging sea or shield guardians is not fun, but at least the characters may have a fair idea of what is coming if they can figure out the nature of the magical braces the villain is wearing. There are plenty of uses for Shield Guardians, and I'd be interested in hearing how you've used them creatively in your game, so let me know in the comment section. And always, thanks for listening, and I'll be back with more for you very soon. Just a reminder, if you're not subscribed already, feel free to do so, and be sure to hit that notification bell. For access to all the scripts and occasional special offers, consider becoming a patron of the channel on Patreon for a minimum of just $1 a month. Also, feel free to join the community on our Discord server and say, come say hi. If your network, uh, oh, your artwork appeared in this video, please let me know. I'd love to link your website and work and promote you here.